may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. Hope everybody there is having a pleasant day. Uh, when I got up this morning, tried to get everything done, it was, looked like it was going to be a pretty warm day. Uh, there was a lot of news. We talked about earlier in the morning about this plan of Biden putting troops on the ground against Israel. We're going to cover a little bit about that. There has been some stuff that's come out, and we're going to go over it. Now, Sister Shelley sent me a little bit of this last night, but this is more of an article on it. It says, Pentagon offers to fund peacekeeping force in Gaza. Israel is reportedly standing in the way of discussions on a post-war planning for the Palestinian enclave. In other words, America wants to separate Israel down the middle, give half Jerusalem to the Palestinians. That's why this X is going to be formed here in a couple of days, not long. And we do believe either the heifers will be sacrificed today, and a 2,000-year prophecy will be fulfilled on this day as you're living, or it's already been fulfilled. And that's why we're seeing things become chaotic. The U.S. has offered funding to partners in the Middle East for a peacekeeping force in Gaza, which would police the Palestinian enclave after the hostilities with Israel are over. Political reported on Thursday. Gaza has been devastated after five months of Israel bombardment and siege, and according to groups, is on the brink of famine. West Jerusalem is seeking uh, to obliterate Palestinian armed groups Hamas, which staged an incursion into the enclave into southern Israel in October, in October, killing around 1,200 people and capturing scores of hostages. Over 32 of them. 32,000 of them have been killed in Gaza, according to the Palestinian health officials. While it remains unclear when the fighting in Gaza will end, the U.S. will be engaging regional partners to discuss how the situation might look the day after the war. Washington has offered to pay for a peacekeeping force that would not include U.S. soldiers would be led by the Palestinians. Of course, put the Palestinians right back in power. Four officials said, including uh, two from the Pentagon told Politico, you can already tell where this is going and why that X is being formed over America. My judgment is here. Arab nations want a clear co commitment to a Palestinian state as part of the resolution, which will, like I said, it will happen once we're gone, but not before. The outlet noted it added that Israel is reluctant to have these conversations until it defeats Hamas, a goal that is skeptics say might be impossible to achieve. Why not? They've already got them beat. And they've got them down to Rafa, but they're trying to protect them. The United States and these other countries are trying to protect Hamas. And Israel knows this. It says, uh, Israel's Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed not to allow the creation of a Palestinian state. Israel is a long pole in the tent an anonymous military told Politico. It would be one thing if the U.S. administration and Israel government were aligned on the way ahead, but that's just not the case. The rift between Washington and the Jewish state have become increasingly evident. Earlier this week, the U.S. allowed a resolution urging the immediate ceasefire to pass the U.N. Security Council. Washington obtained in the vote, and like during numerous previous attempts, when it vetoed proposing documents with the same wording. Earlier in March, the U.S. Senator Leader Chuck Schumer said that the chamber said that Netanyahu has lost his way by allowing his political survival to take precedence over the best interests of Israel. No, he's trying to protect Israel. 
The remarks have, uh, was rebuked by Israel and the Republican Congress leadership, although President Joe Biden said his key ally had delivered a good speech. Okay, so that's what we got on that now. Let's discuss it. We know God knows all this stuff's happening, okay? He knows that. He knows that our government has turned its back on Israel and it plans to do some really bad stuff there. That's why it's not coincidence that on April 8th, this X is formed. God knew back in 2017, that's when the first Revelation 12 sign showed up. And also, that is when this X was started at the same time. So what did he do? What did God let us know? Well, first of all, he got our attention up in the star system, okay? He got our attention. And we saw something we had never seen. It was a Revelation 12 sign. Everything was there. We're like, okay, what does this mean? You know, I always think about uh, Dr. Barry. Indeed, they, they literally thought that was it. They even called their families that the rapture was going to happen. But little did we know, that we know more now, is that was a countdown that was starting. We had another Revelation 12 sign this year, and there's not one next year. This was also a warning. During the same time that the UN got together that has a seat for Lucifer in the audience, it's been there forever waiting on him, the Antichrist. So, God says another, puts another thing up there for us to see again, warning us. And now we have this. Now, many people think that that's probably going to be the rapture. I don't. I believe we are here. I have seen May the 13th. So I don't think that that's the rapture. I do believe that literally what it means is the countdown is almost to an end. And that means judgment is coming on America. That's what we're looking at. That's what's going to happen. Now, a lot of people are going to get disappointed when April 8th comes. And they thought that, you know, these people really do build it up. And I've built it up too. But I've built it up to let you know that that means kind of like the countdown is over for America. And slowly after that, you'll start seeing it. We're already seeing it. With this ship that hit that bridge, that was not coincidence. Just today, there was over almost 40 uh Air refillers over America, tons of Black Hawk helicopters and everything else. I mean, people, there's a lot happening that you just don't know. It's there, but you can't see it. The press ain't going to tell you. They keep it hidden from you. But there is a lot happening in America. And God's done with it. I'm telling you. That's why that X is there. What Biden and them are doing is blasphemy. And God won't tolerate it. God's had enough of America. America has fulfilled its purpose when it comes to protecting Israel. It has done its job. What people don't understand is mankind has a past due date. The Bible tells us that. But see, we don't teach that anymore. We teach the world just going to keep on going. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's what Satan teaches. A lot of the churches today, they just they don't teach about end times because they don't want you to know about end times. That doesn't pay their bills. See, if they tell you about the end times, well, you're going to go out and try to do a lot more stuff and try to get more people on that boat. The church does not want that. They want you to pay their bills. That's why we're, I'm telling you, we're in a time where corruption is like nothing I've ever seen. And it's, it's just everywhere. It's in everything from the schoolhouses to, to the church, to the government. Satan has full control over the world. If you don't believe that, well, you might want to go back to sleep. God has let him, let him understand this, because this is the end of mankind's time. Now, we was only allotted 6,000 years. The Bible tells us that very plainly. We don't teach that anymore because Satan don't want you to know that. If Satan, Satan knew that if we would teach people that they only had 6,000 years and we would start doing the math, people start getting saved. He does not want that. That's why he attacked the rapture. That's why he's attacking the church, the ones that are teaching the rapture, the ones like us, the ones who see in the spirit. That's who he's going after because we're the threat. We're teaching exactly what Paul was given by God himself, mysteries about the rapture and everything else. Even Jesus uh, alluded to the rapture while he was here with the disciples. He talked about two different instances that would occur. One was the, one was the rapture and one is the second coming. He alluded to both. And it, until you know how to rightfully divide the Bible, 
also go in and just study, study, study. But see, people don't. They read it and then they shut it. We go the extra mile. We go into these prophecies and I mean, we lay it. I mean, just 24 hours a day studying these prophecies. That's what we do. I'm not no teacher and I'm not no prophet. Never claim to be one. I listen to God. But I will tell you this. From what we've learned from these prophecies, there's a lot of things happening right now that the Bible was alluded to. And Jesus alluded to all these. Just like the red heifers that I believe will be sacrificed. There's a day there already have been. And like I told you, crazy things are going to start to happen like you have never seen. It's coming. And it's going. It's starting already. I'm talking about earthquakes and everything, and the Bible code backs it all up also. Now, this came in. Hezbollah fires heavy rockets. Uh, see, do, do, do. Hezbollah fires heavy rockets at northern Israel after the deadliest day of Israel strikes on Lebanon. So it's Beirut, the Lebanese military group, Hezbollah fired rockets and heavy warheads in, at towns in northern Israel, saying it was... Uh, it used the weapons against tar civilian targets for the first time at Thursday in retaliation of the Israel airstrikes the night before. They killed nine, including the group, said the several uh, paramedics. There are no reports of Israel's hurt, Israelis hurt in the rocket attack. The Israel military did not immediately offer any comment. Since the outbreak, Israel and Hamas war in Gaza on October 7th, concerned have uh, grown uh, that da near daily clashes along the border between Israel and Lebanon could escalate into a full-scale war. Airstrikes and rocket fire Wednesday killed 16 Lebanese and one Israeli, making it the deadliest day of the current uh, conflict. Israel Chief uh, Military Spokesman, Real Admiral Daniel Hagari, said Israel has killed 30 Hezbollah militants in the past week and has destroyed dozens of Hezbollah military sites in an effort to put push Iran back group from the border. Okay, so we're seeing that Hezbollah has constantly pushed and pushed and pushed to eventually we do believe Israel will put a a decisive blow against them and Iran. Now, Iran's not going to keep hid through this because the Bible tells us that, that there's going to be a major conflict between them, and it'll be the last one, and uh, Iran will lose. Now, they think they have God, but they don't. There's only one God, and he is the, <laughs> he's the king of all Jews. So Iran's, you know, basically out of luck when it comes to a war with Israel. They're going to lose. The Bible tells us that. Like I said, there's only one truth. There's only one truth in the world, and that's the Word of God. People, we're seeing a lot of stuff. You know as much well as I do, you all feel it. I've seen it in the comments of you guys. You all feel the same way I do. You feel it in the Spirit. You know that what's coming. The world is falling apart at our feet. You can either see it or not, but a lot of people are seeing it right now. It says, Biden's UN betrayal of Israel is a fundamental shift. Now, this is a very important article also. Now, like I said... Our country has made up its mind, and it made its decision to go after Israel. Don't believe that the Biden administration claimed it hasn't changed its stance on Israel's war with Hamas. The U.S. Abs uh, abstention on the vote of the U.N. Security Council for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza isn't just a routine political or diplomatic maneuver. It's a fundamental betrayal of the U.S. And Israel lines. And God knew that was coming. That's why this X happens right after this event. That's not coincidence. God's telling us, I know what you all did. And judgment is coming. Whose consequences go far beyond the immediate circumstances in which the White House believes it is a political interest required to do force the Jewish state to give up a goal of eliminating Hamas and the Gaza Strip. Because see, God wants them to eliminate the Gaza Strip. And we're telling them that America's God, but they don't need God, that we're the police of the world. And God's about to show America he is God. See, rather than merely sacrificing Israel's security, it's also ha ha uh, handing a major victory to both Hamas and the Iranian allies. Well, our government's in bed with Iran. 
secretly. Like we've sent them billions of dollars twice now to try to help them build their own weapons against Israel. God knows this too. With the United Nations demanding an end to the war, which, the, like I said, they've got a seat for the devil sitting up there in the UN with his name on it, 666. So when you think about the UN, know whose side they're on. It's not God's. The United States demanding the end of the war. There is a reason for Hamas to stop trying to hold into those parts of Gaza as still controls. Nor is any reason for its release of the hostages it still holds captive, except to deal will force Israel to acceptance to a return in one form or another to the pre-October 7th status quo. That will ensure that it gets away with having committed the largest mass slaughter of Jews since the Holocaust, as well as asserting its privacy over the or primacy over the Palestinian politics for the foreseeable future. That doesn't expose the administration's support guess for the Middle East peace as a sham, since it's essentially anointing an organization pledged to Israel's destruction and Jewish genocide as the primary voice of the Palestinian nationalism. It also sends a signal to the region and the rest of the world that the United States is no longer interested in defending Israel's Islamic terrorism or keeping faith with allies. The Two-Faced Strategy Secretly, uh, Security Council resolutions have been the force of international law, and Israel continues to its operations to eliminate Hamas, as its government has slightly said it must. The resolution could be used for, as a basis of international sanctions against the Jewish state. Yet the Biden administration claimed that the resolution, which called for a secession of fighting for the remaining of two weeks of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, Though the world's body has nothing to say about the Muslim attacks on Jewish holidays like uh, Simcha Torah, the day of October 7th, as well as the release of the hostages and the free flow of aid into Gaza, it's non-binding in any way. It continues to try to talk <coughs> out both sides of its mouth about the war. On the other hand, seeking to stop Israel from winning while claiming, on the other, that it is still a faithful ally. But see, God knows where our government's heart is. See, they can lie to the American people, but they can't lie to God. That's why destruction is coming to America. People don't believe that, but you watch and see, it's coming. Given that Hamas has not seized, or, uh, seized its violence and continuous to hold Israel hostage, Hostages. It can be argued that Israel has a right to continue to its battle, but Israel's enemies around the world, as the United Nations and its in the United States, are inter, aren't interested in the fine points of international law. What they want is for the fighting to conclude with Hamas still standing, and that's what I told you, and God knows that too. And the ability to regroup and rearm and make good on its promises to keep killing Jews. That's what all this is about. That's why the X is coming over America, because we're funding the destruction of the Jews. We are. The Biden administration has made it very clear. They don't like Israel. The Obama administration, he's just a, literally an offshoot of it. They didn't like them either. God knows this. God knows what these people done to get into power, too. I'm telling you. See, they can lie to the people and put people in jail, but you can't lie to God because God will come. And I promise you, as I'm sitting here, he's coming and he's here. And you're going to see destruction. You're going to see judgment come up on America. And it's already begun. At this time, Biden did not condemn the barbaric terrorist attacks of the 22 Israeli communities in southern Israel. That left more than 1,200 Israelis dead, with thousands wounded and more than 250 others dragged into captivity in Gaza. He agreed with Israel's government that Hamas, which has governed Gaza uh, as an independent Palestinian state, is all but, uh, but named since 2007, must be eliminated, letting Hamas get away with murder. Even since the Biden and his foreign policy team have shown themselves to be more worried about conforming 
to a narrative in which the suffering of Palestinians brought upon themselves by starting a war and including rape, torture, and firebombing homes, and they did, in addition to killing and kidnapping, uh, in the, uh, Israelis' rights to self-defense is a, uh, let's see, how, uh, oh, some of these articles, invalidates Israel's right to self-defense or accountably for the barbaric crimes. The notion that Israel's counteroffensive into Gaza was over the top, as Biden uh, mischaracterized it, let alone the big lie put forward by Hamas propagandists that the Western dupes that was uh, genocide remains uh, contrary to the facts. Though many Palestinians have died, Israel's efforts to have have uh, been more measured than those of any other modern army, and similar issues related to urban warfare and results of historically low levels of civilian casualties. Yeah. They put flyers out every day. Oh, we're going to bomb your neighborhood. Please leave. America doesn't do that. And they're calling the Israelis bombard. Huh. Yeah. Lucifer's names all over this stuff. If a mosque is to be defeated, it must be in, if justice is to be served and security of Israel is assured, and it will be then the Israel Defense Force must be allowed to finish the job it started on October the 7th. The Israeli government is right to assert that it has a moral or obligation to root it, at, to root it out of its remaining stronghold of, in Rafah, as well as a guarantee that it doesn't use the tunnel networks in reserve, uh, reserve control in other parts of Gaza. But unlike any other war, this has been a war raged by the Western forces against Islamic terrorists, the international community appears to be unwilling to tolerate an Israeli victory. Not them. It's Lucifer. If it means eliminating Hamas, the reason why Israel is treated in the way has nothing to do with the graphic pictures of Palestinians suffering and even inflated statistics about deaths in Gaza supplied by Hamas and its willing accomplices in the corporate media. At the heart of the betrayal is a belief that Israel and its genocidal Islamic opponents are somehow morally equivalent. Were Biden is trying to maintain the alliance with Israel, then he would have the continue to assert that Hamas must be defeated before any ceasefire and any aid going into Gaza, most of which has been stolen by Hamas, like we talked about yesterday, for using its remaining forces hidden in the tunnels with hostages that are holding must be kept out of their hands, like I said. And the media, Western media, is telling, oh, gosh, we can't get no food in there, and that they're, they're pulling on your heartstrings. Well, Hamas is stealing their food. We're sending it in. Israel's been shipping it in. They shipped in. Do you know, before all this war even happened, they don't talk about this. Everybody's talking about how mean the Israelis are. The Israelis was funding their medicine. They was bringing them in and not having to pay for surgeries and everything. The two doctors that was actually heading this up, Hamas kidnapped them and killed them. But Hamas is the, you know, they're so pitiful, the Palestinians. Oh, my gosh. These people, there's a reason why no other country wants these people. They're evil. Okay? Everywhere they go, these people start wars. That's all the way through the Bible. That's why no country, that's why Egypt's like, no, 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 I don't want them. Jordan didn't want them. Nobody wants them. That's why they're in this little small area with 2.7 million people, because nobody wants them. These people have been a thorn in human society forever. That's why nobody wanted them. But they want Israel to have to deal with them. So everybody's like, you stay next to Israel and let Israel deal with you. We don't want to deal with you. But everybody's like, oh, the poor Palestinians. That's the issue. A moral, serious American government would assert that any of the casualties in Gaza are responsible for uh, of the responsibility of Hamas, not Israel. And not only the way that some Palestinian people also suffering is the immediate and unconstitutional surrender of the terrorists. But for Biden's Vice President Kamala Harris and the rest of the chorus of the Democrats, off office holders and liberal media outlets claiming uh, clamoring for a ceasefire, are not interested in Hamas's uh, surrender. 
they insist that the impact of the war of the Palestinians is more important than ensuring that Gaza is no longer controlled by the people that are intent on using its own platform to carry out a century-old war against the Jews. They don't care about that. Nor is the resolution that the end part point of a pressure campaign not uh, on the Palestinian murders who remain in Rafah, but on Israel to cease a war on self-defense. As the New York Times reported, the abandonment of Israel in the United Nations is just one prong of a multifaceted plan of action being employed by the White House to force Israel to tolerate the, a Hamas victory of war. Now listen, God knows this more than anybody. He knew this was going to happen. He knew America was going to betray Israel. That's why that clock started ticking in 2017. He knew everything that was going to happen in 2022 and today. Now they got away with a lot of bad stuff. You know it and I know it. But now it's come to roost because now judgment comes. You can have your good days and get away with stuff. But like I said, when it comes to God, there's always an end game. And it's here. Trust the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, future. He died and was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Trust the blood of Jesus while you can. And if you're out there, you're lost, call upon him now because time is coming to an end. We all feel it. We all know it. All the watchmen around the world are all talking about it. Sister Gigi had a great thing on there last night. You want to check out Kim Fisher's video last night. She's been seeing a lot also. She's also been very, very adamant that some bad things are coming. We all know it. We all feel it. Brother Tom at Watchman River, same way. The list goes on. Lisa Boyce at Watchwoman 65 has been warning you for a while, too, that this was going to happen, that America would turn against Israel. Well, it has happened. And now we wait. Our time here is coming to an end. It's almost time to go home. Thank all of you all that bought me coffees and those who bought the Super Sticker Show on YouTube and support the channel. God bless each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube. Letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep. Those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.